Thanks for clicking on Wayne.com, where our voice is always heard, uh, <laughs> alongside Blake Sebring of the News Sentinel. Notice we've all got our feet up, too, we do. You know, off uh, the floor. We're talking, we're talking comments hockey. Um, not the best scenario, Mm-mm. considering this past week, the comments But what, did you expect any different from this team? But if you're a pure hockey fan, without comments or without cyclones of mind, great hockey. Oh, great yeah, hockey it was week. fun. Um, so heading to Cincinnati, the comments are down three games to two. Do you think they can do it, I think is my first question. To yeah, you. I think it's possible, definitely. Um, more importantly, they think they can do it, which really trumps everything else. You know, I mean, I was looking last night after the game. I wanted to see their eyes, and I wanted to see, you know, I didn't want to just hear what they said. I wanted to see what they felt. And I, you could tell they were, they were ready for it. I mean, they were like, we're good. We're ready to go. We'll be fine, you know. And part of that, I think, is, is a comfort level. At Cincinnati, on the road, but specifically at Cincinnati, yeah. where you know they're five and one in the season. They split the first two games of this series. Took stole game one really in Cincinnati, and then didn't show up at all in game two. And we're still right there, you know, in the game. And even they said they didn't show up. They didn't do anything, you know. If you're the comments, though, I know that you lost two or three, uh, but one was in double overtime, and then one uh, another one was in overtime, and they won one in overtime. Um, are you? How do you view those games? I mean, is it hard? You know, in the, in the regular season, you get a point uh, in the standings. But uh, in the playoffs, obviously, that's not the case. What, how do they view losing those? Because it did not crush their morale. I think they view it as, we screwed up. You know, it wasn't so much, Cincinnati made the plays, but why did they get the chance to make the plays? And those are things we can correct. And I think that's how they, at least that's what they're saying. You know, I mean, they think they can fix the things that they messed up on that created the chances for Cincinnati. And when they do that, you know, Cincinnati's a great team. They are so much fun to watch. They are so smooth and so strong and so balanced and so deep. And you can see them being a championship team with that goaltending easily. And the comments are like right there. You know, you get the feeling that whoever comes out of this series is going to be ten times stronger than they were when they came into it. And they may not get touched the rest of the way. So it's like, if they could just find a way, anything is gonna is possible. What is it specifically about Cincinnati's goaltending that's impressed you? Oh, man. The guy, he makes four goal-saving saves a game. I mean, stuff that you're thinking, we haven't seen since Pokey. You know what I mean? And then you go to the other end, and Ben's doing the same thing. You know what I mean? And you look at it. You would say, you know, in your head you're looking at the chances that the Comets are getting versus the chances Cincinnati's getting, and you're thinking the Comets are actually getting better chances, but Medor's keeping them out. And when Cincinnati does get chances, Ben's right there. I mean, even the the goal that uh, that won last night, he got a piece of it. You know, I mean, he's getting at least a piece of everything. He, he's right on it. You know, and it's just fun to watch those two go back and forth. Well, one thing we saw specifically after Game 2 was the changing of the lines. Because uh, we talked last week about the Marino line with OJ. Um, they have not been as productive. Marino went into the Game 3, negative 5 in uh, plus-minus for the season. Or for, they weren't uh, even getting shots. Season. You know, that's the thing. What, what do you think of some of the line changes that they made, and are there more changes coming? I think there's more changes coming. Um, they, didn't, they really didn't give Gary Graham any choice. I mean, it just wasn't working. You know, we talked last week about how maybe go through the first period and see what happens. No, they went ahead and did it anyway, um, which they had to. They really had to. They didn't have any choice. If they're not producing, then you got to find something that will. Um, I, I'm really shocked, I guess, that Cy Nutkovich, who's been hurt, and maybe he's not ready yet. I think he'll be ready for Tuesday, for tomorrow. But I'm really shocked that Jason Dale hasn't played. Mm-hmm. Um, now the question comes, who do you sit? Everybody would have said, sit Kaylee Schrock. He's been their best forward. Him and Sadowski have been their mm-hmm. best forwards these last three games. I mean, they've been the most active. They've been the biggest threats. Um, you know, Kaylee's never going to be the most gifted offensive player. But what he's got, he's given it to you, mm-hmm. you know. And there are definitely forwards who are not. And you can see, you know. I'm glad that you mentioned Sadowski because this guy's been – Awesome in the playoffs. Six goals, four points, or four assists, ten points total. That ties him for third in the entire ECHL in ten games in the postseason. What has really 
allowed him to thrive in the role that he's playing in the postseason. I'll give you an example. One thing that just impressed the heck out of me, and it shows you how far Gary Graham has come as a coach. We asked Gary that question after uh, game two, and Gary said, it was my fault. Because right? we asked him, why was he so much better in the playoffs than the regular season? Gary said, yeah, that's on me. You know, I didn't understand what kind of player he was or what role he needed to be in or who he needed to play with, and now I finally figured it out. And I thought that was an incredible statement by a coach. You know, how many coaches are going to say, it's on me in the playoffs, you know? They're not going to provide doubt mm -hmm. usually, but he was honest about it, and I thought that was really, really interesting and showed how much that Gary's grown. Given the confidence that this team has, you mentioned in the locker room on Sunday, they could have easily put their head down yeah. and said, boy, I don't know, we got to play two. They we probably should have, you know, I mean. Right, mathematically. I mean, the way they lost the game, too, with their own screw-ups, you know, you, in most teams we'd think, crap, it's hard enough as it is, and now we just gave them one, you know. But it was, it's amazing to me how quickly they seem to be able to forget things that way. Going forward, 5-1 and one in Cincinnati, do they think about that at all? Sure, it'll be brought up. Okay. I didn't know if that was a topic that they just say, yeah. eh, throw it all out the window, or they say, you know what, in the regular season, we didn't lose here. Well, and they're going to say there's, and there were games this season they probably didn't deserve to win there that they won, you know. So they didn't play their best. You know, we didn't even play our best here sometimes when we won, you know. So it's even more into it. That works, you know. One thing that I, I, I think depth will surface a little bit more in this game because of how many games are playing in a tight period of time. Not only that, you're talking a double overtime game followed by two overtime games and back-to-back -back nights, one day off, and then possibly two games back-to-back. -back. And it's going to be hot down there, too. Well, so I mean, the building's going to be muggy. It's going to be harder to play. The ice is going to be softer, that kind of thing. It's all going to work into it. So who does that favor? Because I know we've talked kind of ad nauseum about Cincinnati's uh, the talent that they have on that mm -hmm. roster, and we've seen it with shallow. Maybe that slows down Cincinnati's speed you just think a so? little bit. Um, the ice wasn't great down there the first two games. I mean, it was okay, but it's probably warmer down there now. It's more humid down there now. There's only so much you can do in an old building with the ice. So maybe that'll play, play into a factor for the Comets. But do you think depth-wise, having played so much in the last few days, does that help or you know hurt what? the Comets? Or, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Both, you know I'll, I'll give you an example. I mean, you would have thought Sunday's game would have been dog pile crazy bad. Mm -hmm. You know Third game yeah. in four nights, two overtimes already. It's a Sunday. The crowd's not that big. You would have thought that would have been the worst game of the playoffs, but it actually was the best. I mean, both teams gave it maximum effort, and they were going at each other from start to finish. It was the best game to watch of all the playoff games. So, you know, and I was really surprised at that because I really thought that they, if they were going to be a little bit of a lag, that would be the game, and there wasn't right from the start. I mean, it was hard played right away and all the way to the end. If you're Gary Graham and you're game planning today to get ready for tomorrow and hopefully Wednesday, what is your game plan? What's the mentality? Because you got to take something away from Cincinnati's office, don't you? I mean, no, I'll fantastic. tell you what, I'll tell you what I would work on. I mean, and I wouldn't even work on. They didn't practice today. There was no ice. They just relaxed and they're they they're on the bus now. But I would say, you know, there was a couple power play chances there we had that were really good chances. You guys should be confident. You guys maybe, you know, maybe that's something they can work on mentally that they had some really good chances. I mean, the crowd was cheering for a power play, which I don't know that that's happened all year, you know, even when they score. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, the I power play's been so bad, but they had some really good chances. And it's like, maybe you can instill some confidence that way with that a little bit. I mean, it's something stupid, but they've all been one-goal games, you know? And one goal could mean the whole difference. Are you concerned? We always talk about, you know, the beginning of a new week. Uh, we want to see what happens in the first period of the first game. Uh, comments weren't necessarily great early in the games. No. They, they warmed up, I Even guess Thursday night, it was awful. Right. You know? I mean, they did, it was like... Yeah, night and day, the third period between the first and second. It always which, is at home, though. Them. It's always been at home, Glenn. It doesn't seem to be that on the road, and that's one of the more baffling things about this team. You know, you would have thought after, because we, we all talked about how game three was going to be the toughest game to win of the entire playoff so far, and there was no urgency. There was nothing there until third period, you know, and it's like, well, where have you guys been? You well, know? I mean, there was, like, no structure. I mean, Cincinnati had a game plan they executed from the beginning, yeah. and the Comets... The Comets played Comets. third forward high, 
which was the wrong thing to do, simply because it took their energy away. Instead of having the heavy forecheck and forcing the play, they had a third forward high after they'd switched all the lines. I understand why they did it, why they tried it, but it didn't work. And they got out of it fairly quickly, but by then it was 2 nothing. You know, I mean, it just didn't work, and, and maybe you just got to turn the dogs loose a little bit, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, to wrap things up, I just kind of want to get your thoughts in a nutshell on what you think is going to happen <laughs> Tuesday, hopefully Wednesday. I think the Comets will win Tuesday. Um, you know, just looking them in the face, like I said, looking at their eyes last night, they wanted to play right then. You know, I mean, they were okay. I, they were, I was really expecting them to need more time to rebound. But they had already forgotten the game pretty much by the time we got back in. I mean, they were angry. They were hungry. Uh, they were upset. But it's like they had already started to fuse those things together to focus them on the next game, which is really hard to do with such a young team. Now, when you've got Colin Chalk and Nick Boucher and you've got Guy Dupuy and PC, it's a lot easier to do when you've got guys who've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. This team has Oj and they got Schrock, who've been there, done that. Nobody else has done that. But they'd all, Gary came in right away and just said, flush it, forget it, it's over. We can't do it, but we can do something about the next one. And it was that quick that that's what they did. It was like the perfect thing to come into the locker room and say, you know, because everybody wants to just disrupt and tear it all apart and jump over Jace Coyle for his mistakes. And they didn't do that. It's like they kind of even got stronger because of it. Flush it is, uh, that's, I've heard that a lot actually in this playoff run, not just from Gary, but from the players as yeah. well. Is that kind of the mantra? It's, that's where they're getting it from. They're getting it from Gary. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that he started it first. I mean, I mean, he, it's so funny how, He'll go in the locker room and right after the game and tell them, you know, a minute's worth of stuff. And then he'll come tell us the same thing. And then we'll go in there, and the first thing they say is exactly what Gary said, you know. It's almost like it's a script they're all reading, in a way. But they all believe it. And it works. It has worked. There's no other way they could get this far if it hadn't worked. It's kind of weird. It's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it's not Missouri's hiding and we're going to find them, you know, by mm -hmm. Colin Chalk. But it's kind of... Similar in the same thing in that they're all buying into it. All right, and you are buying into another nice stay in Cincinnati, the Shea <laughs> Sebring, uh, just on the outskirts, the suburbs of Cincinnati, for hopefully... Suburbs of Cincinnati, that's good. Well, yeah. Hopefully the next Kentucky, couple... Of, Kentucky is a suburb, yeah. It's gorgeous this time of year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the hotel know, room looks amazing. I know, you got mints on the pillows and <laughs> scented towels and all that kind of stuff, but he also covers hockey as well. He doesn't just uh, charge thousands of dollars no. of... of food and drink. It comes and off my raise, you know what I mean? It's a percentage deal. Well, yeah. When you're talking about millions of dollars. Um, <laughs> but I guess we'll, we'll, we'll have some more hockey to talk about. Maybe yeah. the next series, maybe the end of the season, who knows? But the comments actually, like you said, feel I'll tell you what, if, if anything, you can say this team has been interesting from the very start of the season all the way to now. We have and not they're not lacked. done yet. You know what I mean? It's just, it's been fascinating. We have not lacked for things and topics to talk about, and it has indeed been interesting. We'll continue it next Monday on Inside the Zone. For Blake, I'm Glenn, and we'll see you next week.